Boeing Starliner was supposed to be a cornerstone of NASA's commercial crew program. However, what was once envisioned as a rival to SpaceX's Crew Dragon became a years-long saga of technical failures, delays, and ultimately, one of the most embarrassing and disasters in modern spaceflight. The problems with Starliner began long before its first uncrewed test flight. Boeing, one of the aerospace industry's oldest and most respected companies, was awarded a $4.2 billion contract from NASA in 2014, a contract significantly larger than SpaceX's $2.6 billion for the development of Crew Dragon. Given Boeing's extensive experience, many assumed that Starliner would reach operational status before SpaceX. But from the beginning, the project was plagued with mismanagement software issues, and technical hurdles that continuously pushed back its launch schedule. One of the first major setbacks came in December 2019 during Starliner's first orbital flight test. The mission was designed to demonstrate Starliner's ability to autonomously dock with the International Space Station, a critical step before carrying astronauts. However, a software timing error caused the spacecraft's mission clock to be off by 11 hours, leading to an incorrect orbital insertion burn. The spacecraft never made it to the International Space Station and had to return to Earth prematurely. Further investigation revealed another potentially catastrophic software issue that could have caused the service module to collide with the crew module during separation. NASA deemed the mission a high-visibility close call, and Boeing had to conduct a full review of its software development and testing procedures. NASA and Boeing decided that another uncrewed flight test was necessary before putting astronauts on board. This led to the second orbital flight test, originally scheduled for 2021. But on the launch pad, just hours before liftoff, engineers discovered a problem with 13 stuck oxidizer valves in the spacecraft's propulsion system. The launch was scrubbed, and Starliner had to be sent back to Boeing's facility for extensive troubleshooting. The problem turned out to be moisture interacting with the oxidizer, causing corrosion inside the valves. It took nearly a year to develop a fix, leading to yet another massive delay. When the second orbital flight test finally launched in May 2022, it successfully docked with the International Space Station and returned to Earth without major issues. This was a critical milestone. But the extensive delays had already placed Starliner years behind SpaceX, which had been routinely flying crewed missions with Crew Dragon since 2020. The next step was a crewed test flight, the Crew Flight Test, initially planned for 2023. However, further technical issues, including concerns with Starliner's parachute system and flammable tape used inside the cabin, led to yet another postponement. The crewed mission finally launched in mid-2024, carrying two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. The launch itself went smoothly, and Starliner successfully docked with the station. This was a significant achievement, but the real disaster began when the spacecraft was supposed to return the astronauts home. Engineers on the ground discovered multiple helium leaks in the spacecraft's propulsion system, leading to concerns about its ability to safely execute the deorbit burn required for re-entry. Additional problems arose with Starliner's reaction control thrusters, which are critical for orienting the capsule during re-entry. NASA and Boeing quickly determined that a return trip in Starliner was too dangerous. With no safe way to bring the astronauts back to Earth using Starliner, NASA was left scrambling for alternatives. Eventually, it was decided that SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which had been operating without major issues for years, would be used to rescue the stranded astronauts. This was the ultimate humiliation for Boeing. After billions of dollars, a decade of delays, and repeated assurances that Starliner was safe and ready for human spaceflight, it had failed at the most fundamental requirement of a crew transport vehicle. Technical challenges and delays that led to substantial cost overruns. By February 2025, the company had absorbed nearly $2 billion in losses due to these overruns. The financial impact of these failures was severe. Boeing had already taken multiple financial hits due to fixed-price contracts that did not allow for cost adjustments, meaning the company had to absorb all additional expenses. 
In October 2024, Boeing reported an additional $250 million charge to cover Starliner's problems, bringing total losses to $1.85 billion. In addition to financial losses, the Starliner failures led to major changes in Boeing's management. The company's previous CEO, David Calhoun, was already under criticism due to ongoing problems in both the space and aviation divisions. His salary increase to $35 million per year in 2024 became a controversial topic, especially as Boeing continued to struggle with both Starliner and commercial aircraft issues. Facing pressure from shareholders in NASA, Boeing appointed Kelly Ortberg as the new CEO in August 2024. Ortberg had a background in aerospace engineering and had previously worked at Rockwell Collins. Under Ortberg's leadership, Boeing made several strategic changes. In September 2024, the head of Boeing's Defense, Space and Security Division, Ted Colbert, was removed from his position due to the failures in space-related programs. His role was temporarily filled by Steve Parker, who was tasked with restructuring Boeing's space operations. By this time, it was becoming clear that Boeing was considering selling parts of its space division to reduce financial losses. By late 2024, Boeing executives and NASA officials concluded that continuing the Starliner program was no longer financially viable. SpaceX's Crew Dragon had already completed multiple successful missions, and NASA no longer saw a need for an alternative spacecraft that had consistently failed to meet expectations. Reports emerged that Boeing was considering exiting human spaceflight operations altogether and focusing on its commercial and defense sectors instead. Finally, Boeing officially canceled the Starliner program in early 2025 after negotiations with NASA. The program, which was once seen as a key player in NASA's commercial spaceflight strategy, was now considered one of the most expensive failures in modern aerospace history. NASA formally ended its contract with Boeing, and the company shifted its focus toward stabilizing other struggling areas of its business. The cancellation of Starliner was a major embarrassment for Boeing. Not only did the company lose billions of dollars, but it also damaged its reputation in both the space and aviation industries. Although Boeing's Starliner program has been discontinued, another spacecraft is emerging as a strong contender in the space transportation sector, Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. This reusable space plane is designed to transport cargo and, in the future, astronauts to low-Earth orbit destinations such as the International Space Station. Unlike traditional capsules, Dream Chaser features a lifting body design that allows it to land on conventional runways, providing advantages for cargo retrieval and quick refurbishment for future missions. Its unique design enables a gentle re-entry, reducing G-forces and making it ideal for carrying sensitive scientific payloads back to Earth. The spacecraft is set to launch on its first mission no earlier than May 2025. The spacecraft that will be used for this mission, named Tenacity, has undergone extensive testing at NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility. In May 2024, it was transported to Kennedy Space Center for final launch preparations. Dream Chaser will be launched atop United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral. The Shooting Star module, an expendable cargo module attached to Dream Chaser, will provide additional storage capacity and house the solar arrays that power the spacecraft. At the end of the mission, this module will burn up upon re-entry, while Dream Chaser itself will return to Earth and land on a runway. Dream Chaser is capable of transporting up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the International Space Station. It can also bring back approximately 1,750 kilograms of pressurized cargo to Earth. Unlike other spacecraft that rely on ocean splashdowns, Dream Chaser's ability to land on conventional runways offers flexibility in choosing landing sites and allows for quicker access to returned materials. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching.